By prioritizing incentives for the quality of patient care, the value-based healthcare model shifts a share of financial risk onto medical providers. This may sound troubling for your practice, but once you fully understand how financial risks work in this healthcare model, you can utilize it to not only improve patient care, but increase the revenue generated by your practice. In this video, we'll talk about MACRA and the quality payment programs so you can get a better understanding of the financial risk providers face with value-based care and making sure you're achieving your quality benchmarks to improve your reimbursements. Hey, this is Dan from ThoroughCare. At ThoroughCare, we've streamlined value-based care for clinics and physician practices with our care coordination software. With this transition to value-based care, providers find that they could miss out on reimbursements and revenue opportunities if they fail to meet or exceed performance metrics. To get an understanding of this financial risk, we'll explore how value-based care is being implemented through MACRA and the Quality Payment Program. We'll also talk about how it prioritizes payment incentives for the quality of patient care with metrics used to measure performance scores and what you can do to maintain and improve your scores. Keep in mind, this only applies to reimbursements made by Medicare Part B. So first, let's talk about the shift the healthcare industry has made to value-based care and the alternative payment models. So what is MACRA? The Medicare Access and CHIP Reauthorization Act of 2015, or MACRA, is the major move to value-based care healthcare and physician reimbursement. The law was passed to provide the public with better quality care, healthier people, and smarter spending of Medicare dollars. To do this, MACRA established the two-track Quality Payment Program, or QPP. This encourages a value-based care model by tracking quality measures and how Medicare will reimburse providers based on those metrics. The goal of the QPP is to improve patient outcomes through high quality, patient-centered care, provide useful feedback to clinicians, and continuously improve clinical performance and program performance. To achieve these goals, clinicians report specific metrics and are graded by the type and amount of fee-for-service claims they submit. If value creation is prioritized, patients can receive better, more coordinated care. If data reflects this, Medicare will improve specific service reimbursement rates or offer bonuses, while at the same time reducing payments to those clinicians who aren't meeting performance standards. To measure this, the QPP established two payment tracks. The first, Merit-Based Incentive Payment Systems, or MIPS and the second, the Advanced Alternative Payment Model, or AAPM. Clinicians choose how to participate based on their practice size, specialty, location, or patient population. MIPS is the more straightforward option of the two, with Advanced APMs having a few specific models with stricter guidelines to follow. So, what metrics are being looked at that measure a performance score? MIPS judges medical providers by four categories quality, cost, promoting interoperability, and improvement activities. As you do your reporting, you will get a score for each category, and the weighted scores gives a MIPS composite performance score, which determines your Medicare payment adjustment. If this sounds confusing, don't worry, we'll dive deeper into what this really means. Clinicians will face potential payment adjustments based on this score, whether it's positive or negative. Again, this only applies to reimbursements under Medicare Part B, but that can be a significant amount of a doctor's bottom line. In 2018, Medicare Part B benefits amounted to $232 billion nationally. Without an effective strategy to meet the performance metrics of these four categories, providers could see their share of the pie shrink. Or, on the flip side, if MIPS scores are improved, there's money to be made with rate increases or annual bonuses. So how can we improve scores in these categories and limit exposure to financial risk? First, by providing quality care that promotes wellness through reimbursement programs or general care coordination. You've likely heard about chronic care management or CCM, transitional care management or TCM, and remote patient monitoring or RPM. 
These programs can help your practice address specific performance areas that are relevant to value-based care by improving quality, lowering cost, increasing patient engagement, and reducing readmissions. You will also need the ability to report on the necessary data according to the quality guidelines. Utilizing technology and digital tools can help track the four categories associated with MIPS scoring. Care coordination software is a digital tool used by health systems, accountable care organizations, and smaller practices to coordinate various types of patient services. It solves the complex administrative and patient engagement needs associated with preventive wellness programs through care plan creation, data collection and analysis, timekeeping, billing automation, and overall workflow processes. By establishing successful care management and wellness programs, clinicians will get paid to provide the services that can result in increases to future Medicare payment amounts. If administered correctly, these programs can positively affect revenues on both sides of the reimbursement spectrum and allow additional dollars for practices and practice groups. So as healthcare shifts to the value-based care mindset, providers need to shift the way care is provided or face the financial consequences. With this knowledge and the right tools, this can be avoided and patient care and satisfaction can be improved. If you'd like to learn more about value-based care and the programs that support it, visit our Learning Center. If you're interested in care coordination software and how it can help your transition to value-based care, then contact us at the link below in the description. As always, if you like this video, please be sure to like it below or subscribe to our channel. And if you'd like, leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. Bye.